Today, we're going to see how can we solve quadratics by factoring. Now, the main idea here is that factoring is nothing more than a technique. It's a technique that we're going to be using to rewrite equations into something that we're going to call a factor form. And we will see that we can use the technique to rewrite to factor form because it's actually easier for us to solve a factor form equation. So factoring is nothing more than a technique to rewrite an equation into a simple format. And we're going to try to solve the simple equation. Okay. So now let's get started here. So the direction here is solve the following equations. Okay. So here we have a quadratic. So here's your quadratic equation. You want to solve for this. So how can we do that? Well, notice that the leading coefficient is one. So it's an easy factoring. Now, what you want to do here is you want to find some kind of a combination. You want to find a combination such that you want to find two numbers such that if you multiply those two numbers, it gives you, in this case, four. And if you add them up, it gives you five. We want to find out two numbers that if you multiply, gives you the last number, which is four. And if you add them up, gives you the middle number, which is five. So let's try some here. So let's say it's four and one. Let's try. Well, I mean, four times one, it is equal to four. So that's exactly what we wanted. And four plus one, this gives us five which is exactly what we wanted. So notice that the numbers that gives us the combination that we want, it's four and one. So now that we have found those numbers that are needed, we can rewrite this equation into the factor form. And the factor form is, the variable here is x, so it's gonna be x, and the first number in our combination, so that's a positive four, and x. And the second number in our combination, which is positive one. All we did, we just rewrote the left side using factoring. So now this is still equal to zero. So it's still equal to zero. So all we did, we used factoring to rewrite the equation. Now that it's written in this way, we can solve for it. Because when you have two expressions, which in here they're multiplying, is these two expressions are multiplying and they're equal to zero, then you can set each of those expressions equal to zero and solve individually. So we got this new equation, they're multiplying, they're equal to zero. So I'm gonna get the first expression and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. I'm gonna get the second expression and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. And now we can just solve. Let's concentrate on the left side if we want to solve for x here, we got to subtract 4. So now we have that x equals to negative 4. So this is one of the solutions. So let's solve for the other one here. x is negative 1. So now, what are my solutions? Well, here we actually have two solutions which is going to be x equals negative 4. And let me move this here because we don't really need it. x equals negative 1. So the solution for x squared plus 5x plus 4 is equal to x negative 4 and x negative 1. All right, let's try this one more time. Let's look at the next example here. All right, so if we notice that it's a quadratic and there's three terms, then we can use the technique of factoring. So we're gonna draw our table here. I know that I'm looking for a combination of multiplication and a combination of addition. So, what is the number that we want for multiplication? The number of multiplication, it's going to be 
positive 18. So we want something that multiplies to 18 and also it adds to the to the middle number here or the middle term and it adds to negative nine here. All right, so let's, I mean, this is just trial and error. So let's try some numbers. Um, but I can see that six, six and three can be good candidates here. So let me check. Does six and three work? Well, let's check. Six times three, yes, this is equal to 18. So this is good. Now let's check the addition. Six plus three. Well, this is equals to positive nine, but we wanted negative nine. So I know that this is not a good combination. So unfortunately, this is not good. But notice one thing. How about if we try negative six and negative three? Well, let's check negative six times negative three. Well, a negative times a negative, that's a positive. Six and three, that's 18. So this is giving us positive 18. And also negative six plus negative three. This is equal to negative nine, which is exactly what we wanted. So notice that six and three didn't work, but sometimes you can mess around with the signs and you will get the combination that you want. So now that we know that negative six and negative three is exactly what we wanted, let's rewrite our equation here. So instead of writing x squared minus 9x plus 18, we can write x minus 6 and x minus 3. This is still equal to 0. All right. So remember that our objective was to solve. So when you have two expressions multiplying equal to 0, you set each one of them equal to 0. So we're going to get x minus 6. Let me rewrite that. So we're going to get x minus 6 equal to 0 and also x minus 3 equal to 0. All right, perfect. So let's just solve individually. You want to solve for x? Well, let's add a 6. 0 and 6, well, this is just 6. So you got your first solution here, x equals 6. Now, let's find the other solution. Perfect. So that means that we got two solutions here. The solutions are x equals 6 and also x equals 3. Now, what do we mean by solution anyways? Well, notice that if you plug in 6 to this equation, you it, this whole left side will be equal to 0. And the same will go for 3. If you plug in 3 for x right here, this whole left side should be equal to zero. You can check that on your own, but that's the whole meaning of a solution. It's a variable that if you plug it in, it's equal to the other side, which in this case, it's zero. All right, so notice an example three. This is what we have here in example three. Well, let's forget about four for a second here. We're gonna move a little bit faster. Now example three, it's a little bit different than example one and two, because notice that in example one, the equation is equal to zero. In example two, the equation is equal to zero. Now here in example three, the equation is not equal to zero. You cannot start doing a factoring until your equation is equal to zero. So what do we do in this case? Well, let's make it equal to zero. To make it equal to zero, we're gonna subtract five. Now this cancels out. So now let's see n square plus 7n. We combine like terms here, so this is 10. This is equal to 0. All right, now that it's equal to 0, we have our quadratic. So we can start doing factoring. We're looking for multiplication, and we're also looking for addition. So now let's see what we have here. We want two numbers that if you multiply, gives you the first and the last, which is 10. And also, if you add them up, gives you seven. Well, this is a little bit straightforward. Um, have five and two. Well, let's check if five and two works. Well, five times two, 
Yes, this is equal to 10, so we're good. How about 5 plus 2? Well, this is equal to 7, which is exactly what we wanted. So 5 and 2 is the combination that we wanted. So we're going to come back to the equation here, and we're going to rewrite the left side. So instead of writing n squared plus 7n plus 10, we can rewrite this as x plus 5 and x plus 2. Still equal to 0. Both expressions are multiplying. They're equal to 0. Well, set each one will equal to 0. Now we're going to solve individually. Let's solve for x. Well, let's take away 5. So we have that our first solution is negative 5. Let's do the same for this side. Second solution is negative 2. So let's write our final statement. The solution is when x is equal to negative 5 and x equals to negative 2. Perfect. Okay, cool. Last example here. Example four. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a number or a variable. You need to set the equation equal to zero. So note that the equation is not equal to zero. The first thing you want to do is set it equal to zero. So let's move the 3b to the other side. So now to do that, we do the opposite. So we're going to subtract 3b. Now this cancels out, b squared, it comes down. We combine like terms here. So now this becomes 2b, bring down the 35, and this is equal to zero. Perfect. So now let's do a combination here. Uh, let me try to make a straighter line. All right, that's, that's okay, I guess. Um, we're looking for some kind of a combination of multiplication and addition. We're looking for two numbers that if you multiply gives you negative 35 and also if you add them up gives you positive 2. Okay, so let's try to find that combination because of time issues. I'm just going to say what it is. How about 7 and 5? Well, notice that 7 and 5, if you multiply that's 35. But we want negative 35 here. So either the 7 is negative or 5, it's negative. Well, let's say that the five, 7 is negative. So yes, if you multiply this, you get negative 35. So that's perfect. But when you add them up, negative 7 plus 5, this is negative 2. But you want positive 2. So negative 7 and 5 does not really work. So what does that mean for us? Well, that means that we got to find another combination, but at least we have the numbers. So let's try the other one. Let's actually try 7 and negative 5. All right, let's try that out. So 7 times negative 5. This is still negative 35. But notice that when you add them up, 7 minus 5, or if you want to think about it as an addition, because we did say that we want addition. So 7 plus negative 5, which is the same as 7 minus 5. This is equals to 2, which is exactly what we wanted. So we have our combination here. So the number that we want is 7 and negative 5. So we're going to come back here. We're going to write down b, because that's the variable that we want here. So b plus 7. Oops, and b minus 5. Perfect. They're multiplying, they're equal to 0. Set each one of them equal to 0. Let's solve for each one of them real quick here. So we got b equals negative 7. and b equals to 5. So that means that we have two solutions here. The solutions is when b equals to negative 7 and when b equals to 5. Perfect.
So now hopefully this was helpful. Now, here's your entrance ticket. Solve the following equation and use factoring.